Hey guys, Dr. Childs here. Today we're gonna to be talking about how thyroid antibodies harm and cause problems in more tissues than just your thyroid gland. So if you are a thyroid patient who has an autoimmune thyroid disease, either Hashimoto's or Graves' disease, or if you have any of these elevated thyroid antibodies, which I will go over in just a second, this information is very important to you. We used to think that these thyroid antibodies really just sort of cause problems inside of the thyroid gland. Because the way it works is like this. Your body identifies a um, antigen or something that it wants to destroy, and your body creates antibodies to target that specific tissue or that specific protein or that specific enzyme, whatever it is. Now, in the case of thyroid antibodies, those targets live inside of the thyroid gland. So the immune system is creating these antibodies which then hone in like a, like a heat-seeking missile into the thyroid gland and cause thyroid gland destruction, damage, inflammation, etc. We're now understanding that these antibodies, while they don't hone in on other tissues as much as they do the thyroid, they still cause problems in other tissues inside of your body. So this is very important. If you have these elevated antibodies, you should be aware of the extra risks that exist to other tissues in your body. So we're gonna start with TPO antibodies, then I'll move to thyroglobulin antibodies, and then I'll talk about TSH receptor antibodies. So first of all, what do we know about TPO antibodies? TPO antibodies are commonly found to be elevated in patients with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now we know that these antibodies cause hypothyroidism, right? That's what most people have, but they can also cause these other issues. So one of those is Hashimoto's encephalitis. Now this is a condition that occurs inside of the brain and it looks like these antibodies cause inflammation somehow in the brain. We're not really sure exactly how it happens, but we know that it does happen. And when it does happen, this is a very serious problem. Luckily, it's not very common because usually the brain is relatively protected from other tissues and the immune system, um, more so than other tissues inside of the body. When this happens though, it can result in seizures and uh, psychiatric conditions and a whole, a whole bunch of other problems. So it's a very serious condition when it occurs. Next, we know that patients with elevated TPO antibodies suffer from infertility. They have problems um, both getting pregnant and also maintaining the pregnancy. Okay? In fact, they have an increased risk of miscarriages. We also know that there can be some issues with vasculoplacental complications, so that has to do with the miscarriage that I, that I mentioned previously. Probably the antibodies or the immune system interfering with that particular tissue um, and physiology and resulting in um, the loss of pregnancy. We also know that women who are older, who have positive TPO antibodies, have more health conditions in general. So it, they're said to be a little bit more frail, that's the word that's used in the research, and it just means that they're not as resilient as another woman that same age who doesn't have elevated thyroid antibodies. So in general, this is causing something across the entire body. We're not really sure what, what. maybe it's constant inflammation in other tissues or low-grade inflammation that's hard to quantitatively assess, but still exists. We also know that patients who have high TPO antibodies have an increased risk of cancer in the following sites. Increased risk of breast cancer, increased risk of colon cancer, increased risk of kidney cancer, and increased risk of uterine cancer. Now, the actual connection between TPO antibodies and these cancers is actually pretty complex. I spent a lot of time reading and researching about this, and it's not exactly sure if the connection is because of the antibodies or because of the disordered thyroid state that tends to accompany the presence of these elevated antibodies. Either way though, if you have the elevation of the antibodies, you should keep an eye on these tissues because you do have an increased cancer risk for one of those reasons, either because of the antibodies or because of the thyroid dysfunction. And then lastly, we know that women who have breast cancer and elevated TPO antibodies have a, a worsening or a, a, a less favorable uh, survival rate compared to women who do not. So this is the, these are the TPO antibodies, the consequences that occur outside of just the thyroid gland consequences um, in, in people who have elevated TPO antibodies. Let's go on to thyroglobulin antibodies. Now remember, thyroglobulin can be seen in patients with Hashimoto's, but also with Graves. So TPO tends to be a little more specific for Hashimoto's, whereas thyroglobulin, which is what TG stands for, tends to be a little more broad. So we know, similar to TPO, there you'll see a lot of crossover here because they are 
sort of similar in terms of what they do and similar in terms of their protein function and how the immune system attacks them. So we know that people with elevated thyroglobulin antibodies suffer from infertility, much in the same way that patients with elevated TPO antibodies do. We know that patients with elevated thyroglobulin antibodies have an increased risk of the following cancers, breast, colon, kidney, and uterine. Probably, you, you see they're basically the same from TPO, probably for the same reasons I mentioned. And then again, we see that women who have positive thyroglobulin antibodies have worsening survival rates if they have a history of breast cancer. So that's the thyroglobulin aspect. Now let's talk about TSHR, which stands for TSH receptor antibody. So these are, this antibody is frequently seen in patients who have Graves. Now it's worth pointing out that the antibodies, or well, let's say both autoimmune conditions, either Hashimoto's or Graves, they're very, very similar. Even though they result in complete opposite conditions, Hashimoto's tends to result in hypothyroidism and Graves tends to result in hyperthyroidism. The conditions, even though they cause opposite um, symptoms, are very similar at, the, at their base, at their core. So the extra thyroidal conditions that are associated with these antibodies, the TSHR receptor antibodies, includes Graves orbitopathy, which is an eye disease. So this is the bulging of the eyes that, um, that uh, patients with Graves tend to experience. And that is more mediated by the immune system, not by the thyroid. Then we have a Graves skin condition, dermatopathy, and that tends to be usually in the feet and it's, or sorry, in the, in the shins and the tibial area. And that's usually the result of inflammation localized in the skin. And then we also know that patients who have elevated TSHR antibodies see an increased risk of cancer in the following sites, breast, colon, kidney, uterus, and ovaries as well. So there's definitely is a connection between all these antibodies and cancer risk, and then obviously some other tissues like the skin and the brain, and then also um, the uterus, which is why we see issues with infertility. Now, I don't give this information to scare you, but I give this information so that you know how important it is if you have these elevated antibodies that you do something about it. And I have information in the form of videos which discuss natural treatment options that can help you lower these antibodies all naturally, by the way, um, and I'd recommend if you have these elevated antibodies that you check out that video next.